Here we are in front of Bradford House, and the reason we're here is this is the home of John Roser when he came to school in 1928. John came with his brother, Dennis, and after Bradford House, he moved to Sheffield House. He was here for four years, and importantly, he gave us a ring a few months ago and told us that he turned 100. The interesting thing was he knew our founder, so he was here with Mr. Young, and he remembers the kindness of Mr. Young and life here on the hill. We were so excited to hear his story that Mark Huckle and Nick Seward, our headmaster, and I drove down to a town near St. Albans off of the A5, and we paid a visit. So that's what this is all about. I was 100 in September the 23rd, on September the 23rd, 1918, and I'm still pretty strong. I am, no. You are? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you are? Yeah. I was born in Leeds, I lived in Scarborough, Scarborough was a seaside place. I used to play truant from school, and about four or five o'clock, I'd go to the policeman, police station, and tell him I'm lost. Give me my tea. Mum would come looking for me. Wouldn't you rather be the kid be on the sands <laughs> than being in school? At school, were you known as John or Jack? John. Yorkie. You and Yorkie. Everybody has a nickname at King. Yorkie. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was born in Yorkshire. Yeah. So bearing young. What do you yes, remember? Yes, I, I did. He, he was quite tall. He's not quite as tall as Colin, my son, and slightly stooped. Mm -hmm. A very, very kind gentleman. He used to greet every boy and the little ones would sit on his lap and <laughs> he'd treat him like a father. He died uh, when he was 78. And up in the chapel, there's something to him, you know. Which house were you in, John? I was in Sheffield, uh -huh. at Sheffield. And he used to have to weed the path, clean the swirl bucket out, and you know how I did it? A knife took me about an hour and a half to... I didn't know anything about soda in those days. <laughs> and for punishment, you go without your cake on a Sunday. It was self-contained. Uh, yeah. That's Bradford. Haven't you got any of Sheffield? There's one, one here, John. That's oh, Sheffield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know... That, they don't build buildings like this now. They do don't. They? they don't. Absolutely. It lasts hundreds of years. Well, they have done, haven't they? Have. they? Yeah, they look the same. Yeah. But now they charge £30,000 to go there. Well, he's the headmaster. Have you been there? I'm the headmaster. <laughs> I'm? I'm the headmaster. Are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. This is seven. Yeah. Then there's a house there. Next door. Called Greenwich. Between the two houses is a path leading to the left, a fir tree with a uh, unk on it, uh, a small branch coming out in two, and I buried um, a cigar box with a collection of eggs, eggs in it. How did you first arrive? Did you come by train? Me and my brother were put on uh, the tray with a label and a dress on us and put us out at Banbury. Banbury, of course, three ladies on a white horse. Have you ever heard of it? Yes, yeah. I have. Yes. Yeah. I don't know whether it's Banbury or Chippy Norton and somebody met us from Kingham Hill right. and took us there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, I used to put my Meccano on the line and, and, and see the Chippy Dick, we called it the Chippy Dick, come along there. It was a small train. In those days, they had lots of small trains for small uh, rural villages, yeah. things like that. Yeah. 
Do you remember chapel? Yeah, did, I remember the chapel. Did you have services? Yeah. What were they like? Quite good. We got different people come. Yeah. Mostly foreign miss missionaries, you know, come to the chapel. And uh, on the Sunday, we had um, eating collar and a bow, a bow tie. Yeah. But I like the one that said, coconut belong no grass. <laughs> Same as me, look. <laughs> I've accidentally got old. <laughs> One of the uh, sermons was, Behold, a basket full of summer fruit, about people being rosy and red on the outside and rotten on the inside. Mm. At a harvest festival mm -hmm. and uh, Christmas time, they would uh, cut a lot of holly and fir trees and uh, ollie with berries on and a big rope and the tie it all and it come out of quite a big bundle going all round the chapel. I think it was me and Johnny Waldock took the boots to the cobblers and that went scrumping in Cookie's Orchard and the policeman chased us uh, on foot. He didn't catch us. Instead of going back the way we came, we could go a long way round. And these bloody apples were shaking all out and leaving a trail behind. So in the finish, we didn't get any apples. And we used to get a cami come. That means a tramp. Because after the Boer War, there was a lot of people who made homeless and a lot of soldiers come out and got nowhere to go. But this one used to live in no man's land. That's a ditch between two estates. And um, we would take him food up there and somebody used to do his washing for him. <laughs> You told me that rugby was better than football. It is. <laughs> Football's a game for hooligans. Oscar Wilde said that, he ought to know. That it's a game for hooligans played by hooligans. They had some very good cricketers. And uh, one fella about from here to there, he said, I can give you sixpence if you can catch this ball. And he tossed it to me and I caught the wrong one. <laughs> you saw too. It's called a googly. Yeah. And being as I was left-handed batsman, mm. I was dolly push. <laughs> I was uh, a left-hand batsman. I wasn't very good, but we had one fellow, I forgot his name, but he used to just poke, 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 poke. Ernie Lovegrove, who's buried next to... Uh, Mr. Mr. Young. Young in Dalesford was a slogger. <laughs> yeah. Did you learn to swim at Kingham? Yeah, yeah. We laid on a bench, uh, about a like a big form, you know, and we taught to swim, taken down the open swimming bar, George Bond, and a big pole, uh, well, uh, not a big pole, like a, a broom pole, you know with the tape around it and around your waist after being doing that in the open. And eventually, when they thought you could... Uh, and I hated George Bond, he was so strict, you know. And I uh, swam this 55 yards and just about collapsed on it. It was sheer... <laughs> to get out of it, uh, I didn't like the fact. When I met him later on, he was quite a nice fellow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is yeah. the Bible. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Do they still give these? Huh? We do. Yes. Uh, yeah. To Timothy. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. And that was in 1932. He wrote that then. Yeah. He left. Yeah. Wow. And when we left, we were given. Uh, a Bible, a new suit, and come from Halifax. Yeah. But I didn't go back because 
My mother was a not very nice woman. Mm. Yeah, I went to light to my house. Yeah. I ran away from home. Yeah. Uh, left her and she tried to apologise. But you can't take back the spoken word. Yeah. All the apologies in the world. And uh, like I said, I went to light to my house and Mr Lamb was there. And I said to him, I was in Sheffield House. And they gave me a life there. And you stayed there till you were confident enough yeah. to work. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovelier. The rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. And the summer leaves are too short to stay. Smooth on Valentine's Day. Do you know who wrote that? <laughs> Uh, no. Who? Shakespeare. Oh, uh, yeah. yes. Oh, right, he's my best friend. Aw. Look at my best friend. He's handsome. 1942. Aw. That was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Hey? It's been lovely meeting you. Yeah. And hearing about Kingham. Yeah. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thanks. Good. I've been looking forward to it. Aww. It's good to talk to you. Yeah.